Hello, this is Aaron, and welcome to my video cast, I guess. I guess that's what you'd call this. Um, I thought I'd try this on video today. Um, the podcast thing is alright. There's something sort of creepy about just talking into the void and then hearing your voice come back out of the void. But um, video might be creepy too, we'll see. But there are some things I want to do on video... There are some things I want to do that I'll have to do on video in front of a whiteboard or that kind of thing that just won't work with a podcast, so I need to get some practice with that, um, with editing the video and things like that. So I thought I'd try this one on video. Um, I'll still make a podcast of it in case anybody wants to listen to it that way without having to watch it. Um, but this way I can also show off my Royal Hynerian Sluggers t-shirt which is a reference so obscure it might make me a hipster. Um, <clears throat> the Adams County Fair started Wednesday. Um, I talked about that a little bit the other day, so I won't go into it again, but if you're interested in the fair, um, I don't know if I'll be going out there today. It will be tomorrow, but if you're interested in the fair, you can find it online at adamsfair.org, and they have a complete um, schedule and everything there. So, if you're in the Quincy area, you might want to check that out. Um, topic for today, and one reason I, one other reason I wanted to do this at my desk, where I could kind of have some notes in front of me, um, was just kind of a wrap up of political stuff that's happening because there's a lot happening. A lot happened yesterday. Uh, we were calling it the happening. Um, so a lot happened yesterday, but I don't suppose most of it has been talked about in the mainstream media. Or if it has been, it's been downplayed and, and uh, distorted. So I thought I'd go through a few things and just kind of summarize what happened. Um, first, a little bit of background on it. Um, one thing I tend to do is to observe patterns, to notice patterns of in events or in people or groups, whatever. Um, and there's been a pattern with the Trump administration or around it, not necessarily them personally, but, but just around them, um, really going back to the campaign. And the way the pattern works is first something comes out either from Trump himself or from his his uh, office or from anonymous sources so that are supposedly in his office, whatever, it doesn't matter what the source is, but something comes out that sounds like bad news for him or for his more conservative supporters like myself. Um, and I use the word conservative with quotes around it, but I'll have to explain that some other time. Um, most people I know would call me a conservative, even though I don't anymore, but I'll I'll get into that. Um, so that's the first part of the pattern. Something comes out that seems like bad news, just on the face of it. But there's something about it that doesn't really ring true. doesn't fit what we think we know at this point. But on the face of it, it sounds bad. So leftists and never-Trumpers run with it, and they have a big party, and they say, this is it, this is the... This is the you know, this is where he's going down. Um, we saw it with when when he met with Romney. You know, it's like, oh, this is this is it. This is where he's going to show his true colors. He's going to turn out to be an establishment liberal because he's going to make Romney a Secretary of State. Um, we saw it with um, with the Syria attack. So this is you know he's 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 bowing to the globalists. You know, he's going to get us into a war. Um, we saw it lots of different times. <clears throat> and then, you know, not only do the people on the other side run with and have a big party, but defeat us on our side. They're so used to being just beat over the years by Republicans, you know, let down, betrayed, all that. Get glo get into gloom and doom and, oh no, you know, we're, we're screwed, he's turning on us, that kind of thing. So, a few of us sit back and say, this something isn't right here. Something doesn't doesn't jive with what we know with what we already know. Somebody's acting like 
we don't expect them to act. So let's wait till there's more information and we'll see what's really going on here. And sure enough, some time goes by and either the, either the news just fizzles, it never comes to fruition, or something comes out that shows, no, that isn't what was going on at all, it was actually something else. Like in the case of Romney, um, Kelly, what's her name? Kelly, oh, heck, I can't think of her name now, which isn't very nice, but the, the lady who was his campaign manager towards the end and She's still there in some sort of capacity, I'm pretty sure. Kelly Ann. Anyway, um, she came out a few days later, went on all the Sunday morning talk shows, and said, Romney, are you kidding? And, uh, and laughed about it. And then, and then the same people tried to run with that, saying, now she's doomed because she's out there, she's out there being rude and saying things against the and, and you know, talking without permission, and, well, that wasn't the case either. She's still there, probably with her feet up on the couches, which drives them nuts. So that's the pattern. You get some sort of news comes out that seems bad, but there's an off note about it. It, does, it doesn't seem quite right, and everybody runs with it, but if you sit back and wait, it turns out that's not the case. It's not what it looked like on the face of it. Well, in the recent weeks, that pattern has started to develop again. Um, it started with uh, the president um, bitching, basically, about Jeff Sessions, um, his attorney general. Now, if you look at the facts, Jeff Sessions is doing a great job. He's working on getting things back to the rule of law when it comes to immigration. Uh, immigra illegal immigration is down something like 70 75 percent um, people are going home going to where they belong um, he's cracking down on the sanctuary cities that flout the law he's um, draining the swamp if you're actually paying attention to that kind of news he's he's people are being arrested um, I'll get into that in another bit here so he's doing a good job but you have this recusal thing, which is all based on the Russia stuff, but the Russia stuff was made up. So, if you believe that the president is really mad at Jeff Sessions because he recused himself from defending the president on something that didn't even exist at the time because it was made up, then this stuff makes sense on the face of it. But, if you actually are following any of it and have any idea what's going on, it doesn't make sense. Um, it also makes makes Trump look like sort of a passive-aggressive whiner, which he's not. You'd know that if you if you watched the first season of his TV show. Um, if he decides somebody's not doing a good job, not doing their job, he fires them. He doesn't bitch at them in public for weeks. So. The whole thing just didn't really, just didn't really fit. It didn't fit with what we knew about either man. It didn't fit with the facts of the situation. So I said, okay, something's going on here. Something's going on that doesn't fit the, the surface. And that kind of continued with just other things going on in the past couple weeks. Um, you get you get these time you get these times when there's sort of a surge in the media of oh no things are falling apart and there was also the I guess the other thing was the the appointment of uh, Scaramucci I guess is how his name is, is pronounced the new communications director and of course they immediately started asking him how are you going to get the White House back on track well of course that was obviously not a question that was an attempt to build a narrative of the White House is not on track. Which he, you know, which he tried to counter, but there again, there was this whole idea of things are coming apart, people aren't communicating, and you know somebody's going to get you know, somebody's going to get fired here. Basically, trying to drive a wedge between different people in the administration. So that was going on. That pattern was start looking like it was repeating itself. The other thing, the other part of the background was what 
people are calling Pedo Gate or Pizza Gate, whatever you want to call it. Um, I wrote a couple of things last year about um, aspects of it, and I had intended to write more, but I didn't get around to it for a couple of reasons. Um, one was that after I wrote the first piece, uh, the election happened, and after the election, the Democrats were going crazy with um, recount attempts and trying to manipulate or browbeat or whatever you want to call it, electors, and try to get a few electors to switch sides. And it was there was, there was some serious attempt to really swing the results of the election. So some of us who were looking into that stuff kind of thought, you know, maybe this isn't the best time to back these people into a corner. Maybe this isn't the best time to make them feel like they have nothing to lose and they will do anything to overturn this election. Maybe we ought to just let it, let it lie for a while until, until the inauguration, basically. And so that's kind of what at least some of us did. It, not that people stopped investigating or connecting the dots, but stopped pushing the, pushing the information out there, trying to wake people up to it. But it's still been out there. Um, the facts are still what the facts are. Um, there's clearly uh, a child trafficking pedophile ring that has, um, what should say, offices, but that, that operates in Washington, D.C. in a particular in a particular group of businesses that all had symbols, um, what symbols that the FBI recognizes that pedophiles use to signal each other, they all had it in their logos and stuff like that. We know that they're connected through, we know that they're connected to powerful people in both parties. This isn't really a, this isn't a Democrat-Republican thing, like I've said before. Um, I think there are probably more Democrats involved in it um, because they've been in power. But um, one of the one of the people caught up in it was Dennis Hastert, Republican from Illinois, who was the House Speaker at one time, and uh, as far as I know, he's still in prison for. Oh well, no, no, he's not in prison. That's right. He he managed to make a deal, but he was accused of he was or he might be in prison for something else. Anyway. He was accused of molesting children, molesting young boys. And he was friends with John Podesta, Clinton's campaign manager and close confidant. They're also friends with Jeffrey Epstein, who runs the Lolita Express. Um, so we know that the, we know this is going on. We don't necessarily know exactly every person involved in it, but we know the basic idea that yes there is a pedophile ring there is a child trafficking ring that's that has roots in Washington DC and other cities that operates partially through Haiti partially through other places um, so that's out there and so far in 2017 there have been over 2,000 arrests of pedophiles now that's up from what had been about 400 a year. There were a couple of, there have been a couple of big busts, um, one in Germany, one in, um, one in the Netherlands, I forget exactly which country, um, or, well, one in Germany, one in the Netherlands, I was going to say one in Europe, but there was one in Germany, one in the Netherlands, one in California, um, there were reports yesterday that there could be another big one coming in California. And just lots of little arrests, too. Um, a couple of those shut down some major um, child porn websites. But there have been quite a few just arrests of individuals around the country. And that's all coming from somewhere. Um, all these different... You know, local police departments and FBI offices didn't just suddenly discover that there were pedophiles operating in their in their neighborhoods. I mean, somebody has somebody has been telling them, "Hey, you've got 
you've got someone here, or you've got someone there, or there's this website, or whatever it is, to go from 400 in a year to 2,000 in a half a year. You know, that's a, that's a 10 times increase. So, so that's out there, that, that something is happening. Somebody is tightening the noose on these people. And nobody's claiming it, nobody's talking about it, nobody's saying, yes, we're, you know, we're going to take them down, but it is happening. So there's got to be a reason it's happening. So that's in the background of all this. Um, I think I said, I think I said, you know, I, I started to write about that last year. And one, yeah, the one reason I, I didn't write any more about it right away was the, was the election and the possibility of the election being overturned. The other reason was that it's just a really soul-sucking topic. Um, these are evil people. They're not, you know, we talk about sin. Some people like to call sin a mistake or, you know, someone just goes wrong, gets in with a bad crowd, that kind of thing. That's not this. This is evil people who destroy, who, who take pleasure in destroying things. And the more innocent and beautiful something is, the more pleasure they take in destroying it. Um... Some of them are, some of them are, well, certainly mentally ill, but there's a, some of them are also, you know, there's Satan worship, the spirit cooking thing that, that the Podestas were into, um, is, is a satanic ritual. You know, you, you talk about that stuff and a lot of people will say, oh, that doesn't, you know, that's, that doesn't happen today. People don't, but they do. Now, they may not be actually sacrificing virgins. They may just dress up a doll of a, of a child and use that as their, as their sacrifice, but it is still a satanic ritual. Um, and I would suggest that you don't look up spirit cooking on the internet unless you have a strong stomach or, you know, have some idea what you're going to, what you're going to find, but they're, they're evil people. And when you start to read about or research that kind of thing, it just, you know, it drags you down. Um, it's depressing, it's disgusting, and you really have to go into it with a certain, I don't know, a certain mindset or a certain, uh, what would you say? Um, I don't know, you have to be prepared for it. This is not something you can just dabble in. Um, and so I put it off. That's, that's basically what it boils down to. I put it off. And, and the other reason was that there was always something new coming out. I said, you know, if, I, if I'm going to write about this, I really want to have it right. Um, I don't want to be just speculating. And there was always something new that I thought, okay, I'm going to have to do some research. I'm going to have to get caught up on what's new. And so that was another reason I didn't get around to it. So I do hope to get back to it one of these days. But in the meantime... So that was in the background. So now I've spent a lot of time talking about the background of all this. Um, so what was happening? What was the happening? Well, recently, um, on the message boards that I've talked about before, where the weaponized autists hang out, someone claiming to be inside the White House um, started making, started talking about s some big things coming and making some predictions. Well, first of all, nobody really can prove, everybody's anonymous on these message boards. Nobody can really prove who he is unless he does something like, okay, at tomorrow's press conference, I'll, you know, sneak a, you know, sneak something into the background to prove that, yes, I'm inside the White House. That's about the only way someone could do it, and he'd have to keep doing that all the time because Again, you're anonymous. Anybody can claim to be anyone else, which is part of the part of the reason they're able to do things that other people can't afford to do. You know, like like investigating people who you know might be able to have you commit suicide. <coughs> so this this source who claimed to be in the White House, he started predicting some things, 
And one of the things he said was that on July 27th, a lot of things were going to happen. Things were things were being put into place to... Um, he, did, he didn't really go into a lot of details about what would happen. He just said, it's, it's going to blow you away. It's going to be a big deal. Um, well, it kind of started the night before with um, a Pakistani man, um, Awan or Awan, I'm not sure how they pronounce their name, but a Pakistani man who had worked for about 30 different he, he and his brothers, although brothers, I think here just kind of refers to a, a gang of a gang of uh, criminals. But he and his brothers had worked for about 30 different uh, Democrats in Congress, and he had also worked for the DNC, the Democratic National Com Democratic National Committee. He the main one he worked for was Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who had been the the chair of the DNC until she was caught basically trying to fix the election for Hillary over Bernie in the in the Democratic part of the election before Republicans were involved in it. She was she was involved in trying to shift votes and, and money and things from Bernie to Hillary. And so they had to they had to let her go, although you know, the, nothing happened to her. She just had to give up her leadership position. So this this guy was working for her. And came under um, investigation by the FBI for stealing information. Um, some of the some of the Democrats that the these brothers were working for had gotten them top clearance, top secret clearance to certain things. And it started to look like, well, they're using that clearance to get secrets and passing them out to Pakistan or India or China, probably not India, but Pakistan or China or you know, whoever's the highest bidder, probably. Um, they somebody realized they had thin clients set up, which a thin client is a computer that's basically not a not a full computer. It's just a machine that allows you to connect to another computer, and then the the actual work and information that you're doing is on the other computer or somewhere else. So they were setting up thin clients which were connecting to some other computer somewhere else, presumably off in their offices somewhere, and so people were typing stuff into these and it was all being saved somewhere else. So the FBI started looking into this, and some of them fled the country a while back, but one of them didn't flee right away, and he got arrested Wednesday. It was Wednesday, yeah. He got arrested Wednesday um, at Dulles Airport um, trying to flee the country. And they also, um, a while back, um, seized some of his seized some of their equipment as part of this investigation. Well, Debbie Wasserman Schultz was so worried about a laptop of hers that got seized, or that she claimed was hers. She was so worried about this laptop that she went to a budget meeting, a budget meeting for the local D.C. cops, and started haranguing the D.C. police chief about getting her laptop back. And he told her, it's part of an investigation, sorry, I'd, I can't give you evidence that's being held for an investigation. And she actually threatened him and said, you know, you're, you're going to be sorry, there's going to be consequences if you don't give me that laptop. So she was pretty desperate to get that laptop back for whatever reason. And by the way, she hadn't fired this guy yet. Even though he was under investigation, he had, you know, some of his colleagues had fled the country. Other Democrats had fired him, but she hadn't fired him yet. She didn't fire him until after he was arrested Wednesday. So, him being arrested was actually predicted by this, or him being him being uncovered, his information um, coming out, um, was actually predicted by this source that claimed to be in the White House at least a day in advance. I've seen the I've seen the archive of that. So people said, "Oh, this guy, this guy knows some things. Um, he may, he may really, you know, have some idea what's going on." And so then they said, "Okay, he he also predicted that some big things were going to happen on the 27th." So everybody was was waiting for that. And his arrest was probably really the big thing or the biggest thing because you know he's going to have information or his computers are going to have information. 
Um, the other part of it is that a, a, a couple, um, uh, just, a, just a regular couple of people, moved into uh, an apartment or a house that he had had and found a bunch of computer equipment. They said some of it looked like it had, it had someone had tried to destroy it, but they found a bunch of computer equipment. And I don't know if they knew who had had the place before then, if they had any reason to be suspicious, but they called the FBI. So the FBI ended up with a bunch of his stuff, including some hard drives, which presumably have, have data on them. And so, so he tried to get that back. He, he started working through, his, working through his connections, trying to get that stuff back from the FBI, saying that, um, saying they didn't have any right to it and he needed it back. And so that's probably why he was still in the country. He was still trying to get that stuff back. And eventually realized he wasn't going to get it and decided to get out and left it a little too late. So they will probably try, you know, they'll, they'll probably try to just say, well, he was just acting on his own, but it's if, if those hard drives aren't completely destroyed, they'll find out what he was actually doing, which was probably more of what had been going on during the primaries, which was trying to fix the election. Um, so that was the, that was kind of the start of it, you know, him being arrested and what might come out of that. Um, the other thing is, or the other things, um, the, um, there were a lot of arrests yesterday. There was a California Attorney General um, who was arrested for having child porn on his computer. Um, if you go to, if you, if you, or last night I went to Google and did a search for child porn arrests and then limited it to the last 24 hours and a bunch of them came up. I mean, there were, there were a flurry of arrests. Like I said, just, just individual ones here and there. But somebody's, somebody's stepping up the pace um, on cleaning cleaning up the swamp. There were a couple of uh, Pennsylvania mayors arrested on Wednesday, I believe, Tuesday or Wednesday, for um, conspiracy and taking bribes. So, you know, all this stuff is part of the swamp. You know, when, when Trump talked during the campaign about draining the swamp, it wasn't specifically about the Clintons. I mean, they may, they may have been major, certainly major, uh, major actors in the swamp, major beneficiaries of it, but it's not just about them, it's about all sort of people who are corrupt um, for, for lots of different reasons. So there were arrests and another, another part of his prediction was that it's going to continue for about a week. So then last night, or not last night, the night before last, wasn't it, or no? Maybe it was last night. I don't know. It was a long day. Republicans and or Republicans on the Judiciary Committee, um, they had been considering this bill, and I don't even remember what the bill was. But the Democrats on the committee had tried to stick in an amendment demanding more investigation of of the election, more investigation of the Russia stuff. Um, more invest, more demands that, that Trump answer questions about this or that Sessions answer questions about that or whatever. And at some point, the Republicans on the committee just kind of got fed up with it. And because they have the votes, they, they introduced an amendment to remove that amendment. Well, not remove it exactly because it hadn't been added yet, but and introduced an amendment of their own saying, we want to we want to investigate these people. We want to investigate what was going on with James Comey and Loretta Lynch, um, Obama's attorney general. You know, what were they doing to interfere with the election? Were they wiretapping people? Were they, you know, were they revealing, re revealing people's names and documents, things like that? Um, said, you know, none of the... You know, if you want to talk about, if you want to talk about shady stuff going on during elections, so let's let's investigate that. There's plenty of that to investigate. Well, Democrats kind of freaked out on the committee, and uh, 
tried to block that, tried to stall it, but they went ahead and passed it. Now, they aren't actually, it wasn't actually an amendment to investigate, it was an amendment to ask the Attorney General to assign another, um, to assign another, uh, what do you call it, special counsel to investigate it. So there would be one investigating the, the allegations about Trump and Russia, and then there would be another one investigating this other stuff that actually did happen. But whether it'll happen or not, that's, you know, that's up to the Attorney General. But Congress is basically saying, we want you to investigate this, and, or at least the Judiciary Committee, but Congress should, Congress should support it. So that suddenly happened last night. And then um, the chairman of the Intelligence Committee said, yeah, and we still want to, we still want to know who, 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 the, what do they call it, Un, uncovered, unmasked, who unmasked all these documents? Because there was, there were a bunch of documents <clears throat> that came out of all the wiretapping they did. And the way it works is you can't wiretap an American citizen without a, without a, you know, a subpoena, without, without a judge's order to say that it's okay. And you can't get that without some sort of proof, or evidence at least, that there is a crime going on that you're trying to gather evidence for. I mean, if, if you know, you've probably seen it on cop shows enough that you, know, you can't just say, we want to wiretap this guy just because we're suspicious of him. I mean, you gotta, you got to have something. But you can wiretap foreigners all you want. Um, if you're the if you're the FBI or the NSA or whatever, you can wiretap foreigners all you want. Well, foreigners talk to American citizens, so what do you do when the foreigner you're wiretapping talks to an American citizen? Well, then you have to mask the American's name in any, any sort of identifying information, and so that's where you get these documents that have a whole bunch of stuff blacked out. Is if, if you, so you have this transcript of a phone conversation, let's say, or you have these, this transcript of emails, and you want to pass that along to somebody from the, like, if you're at the NSA and you get a request from the Obama administration that said, we want to know about, you know, conversations that such a so-and-so Russian agent had while he was in Washington, you have to take those documents and black out the names of any Americans in those documents or anything that could identify them and then pass the documents on. And then if they want to see the names of the Americans they have to put in an unmasking request which then has to go to a judge. So it's basically like getting the subpoena after the fact to say okay we think there's there's information in here about somebody who committed a crime we want to see that we want to get that person's name revealed and then the source of the of the document can go through and do it again but leave that person's name revealed so the obama administration asked for the documents of the wiretapping they had been doing and at first the judge said no because the judge said you don't have any basis for this but they went back three times i believe and the third time they just lied and said they and said they had a right to it and convinced the judge that that it was okay and so they got these documents unmasked well so and there's a chance that 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 resulted in someone getting killed last year but anyway that's for another that's for another talk sometime um, so now the the chairman of the intelligence committee wants to talk to those people again because see he had called them in before he had called in Samantha Power and Susan Rice two of Obama's people that were involved in that one way or another he had called them in before but they'd refused test they'd refused to come in and just have a conversation you know because the Congress can invite people to come speak but you don't have to they would have to subpoena you or require you to come in so he's now saying, hey, those people never came and explained themselves. They never came and explained why did they unmask these people. You know, what, on what basis, what, what right did they have to do that? And who, many, who did they give this information to? 
once it was unmasked, did they keep it in the White House or did it go over to the DNC? Did it go over to people who could use it in the election? So he wants to talk to them about that. So it's pretty clear at this point, and I haven't even checked the news this morning, but it's pretty clear in this point, at this point, that several things were kind of organized to hit them with these investigations and arrests all at once so that they couldn't get prepared. And I think that the kind of the, the stuff between Trump and Sessions, I think that was mainly a diversion. Um, it made, it, it got people in the media and on the left to defend Sessions because, you know, Trump's attacking, you know, Trump's saying something bad about somebody that must be a good person, right? We'll, we'll defend him because anything that's bad for Trump is good. So it got people, <clears throat> it got people on the left to defend Sessions for a couple weeks, which frees Sessions up to do his job even better because it you know, makes him look more, you know, more independent. So I think that was basically theater to to set him up in a better position and to be a distraction. And the other thing is the the whole business with transsexuals in the military. And I mean, can't imagine a better distraction than that. That's just sent people bonkers. I mean, to think that to just go back to a policy that existed one year ago is somehow going back to caveman times. I mean. Obama didn't change the policy until he was seven and a half years into his presidency. You know, he was fine with with keeping them out of the military for the first seven and a half years of his of his administration. It wasn't until he was a lame duck and on his way out that he that he did that basically as a big middle finger to America because he wanted to make the military not only take them but pay for you know, all the, all the medical nonsense that goes with them. So just to go back to the policy that was in place for the first seven and a half years of Obama's presidency is just unthinkable to people. Like, that's just, you know, that's going back to medieval times. That's going back to caveman times. So they just went bonkers, and it made an amazing, you know, that's an amazing distraction. They were all focused on that when... Congress was lining up investigations and arrests were being arranged and things like that. So yesterday was really, you know, if the source is correct, yesterday was really just the start of it. Um, it's supposed to go on for a week. It's, it may take a week before, you know, people people towards the top of the of the ladder in these criminal organizations <clears throat> are hauled in, but we'll see. Um, yesterday was pretty good, even if it doesn't go any further. And all the all the pedophile arrests that are happening are good. You know, even if they even if they never get the the very top people, or even if they never get everyone, everyone is is a good. Everyone that gets stopped is a good thing. Um, when you realize, you know, 2,000 arrests, that's a lot of people. That's that's a lot of people stopped. Um, but it also gives you an idea how many are still out there, how, you know, how large these organizations, these rings probably actually are. So that's kind of a summary of what happened yesterday. A little disjointed, I'm sure. But those are the highlights anyway. Hopefully I didn't miss anything too important. But I will try to kind of keep up on what's going on. And one other funny thing, uh, Debbie Wasserman, Wasserman Schultz, her district in Florida is now being investigated because it turns out they have more registered voters than they have people of voting age, which is a nice trick. For every 100 people of voting age in her district, there are 103 registered voters. So now that's being investigated. Um, really nothing these people won't do I guess you know, they, they've, they've got all the they've got all the bases covered so that's kind of my wrap up for this week I will try to keep tabs on things and do another one of these um, hopefully next week there will be a lot more to talk about and uh, 
Thanks for watching or listening, and have a good day.